So this is the AVIT department, Westminster Computer Lab. Today we want to talk about file management. Um, it seems to be one of the topics that's uh, probably the most important from the students I teach at college, and yet the one that's so badly practiced. Um, it sounds funny, but it's very, very true. Uh, so we want to make sure, especially for this computer lab, that you follow some common sense rules and that you just realize that uh, we only have a finite amount of space available and we don't want to ab abuse that privilege. And to give some tips on how to make your system perhaps work better at home as well. Um, file management uh, um, is equated, uh, I equate it to basically your desk. Uh, and that's why on your system here you have a desktop. It's to resemble your desk at work. And if you know after a while you don't uh, put things in the proper place, that the desk can get very, very cluttered. For example, you don't know what the color of your desk is after a while. And just like getting into situations like that, bad habits to tell you the truth, then it takes forever to look for that piece of paper that you're looking for. And uh, it might take several minutes to actually go through the pile on your desk before you get to your actual work. Well, you know, the computer system is like this as well. It's uh, it's a system that stores in uh, files and has folders to try to make things organized, but if you don't practice what you're taught, if you don't apply uh, the principles and the uh, techniques of file management, then you're going to be messy. And to tell you the truth, if your desktop is just cluttered with icons, then it indicates that you're messy. Sorry to break it to you like that, but it's just the truth. <laughs> So therefore, um, the people that have developed um, the uh, operating systems have gone to great stride to help prevent it. it. used to be back, I think, in Windows 3.1, they had the 80% rule, that if you had 80% of your hard disk uh, full, that performance would start to suffer. Uh, in this day and age, it's not 80%, it's, it's, uh, you can go much higher, but still, um, the uh, hard disks are finite, and no matter how someone would say, well, I have such a huge drive, I'll never have to uh, use it again, uh, don't worry. <laughs> if you neglect it long enough, you will eventually run out of disk space or not maximize your uh, system for the best possible use. So therefore, we've got to learn uh, file management in order to um, have a place for everything and everything in its place and uh, make it easier when, um, when uh, working with the computer system. Uh, so the application that I want to uh, teach you uh, that we use in the computer lab is an application called Nautilus. Um, you get to it by going down to the docking station and clicking on Places. And as you see, a doc, uh, context menu comes up and there are different um, areas on the computer that you can go to. For example, the computer to see all of the different devices. Uh, your home account, which is personally your storage space when you log into your particular account of the desktop, which is what you see on the screen in the background. Uh, trash, trash bin, and the file system starting from the very beginning or what we call the root, the root uh, directory. Uh, then there's some other uh, devices, like uh, perhaps uh, you have something on CD or DVD, even network. You can connect up to network if it was set, set up properly. Right here, right now, we don't have it, so it is connected up. Uh, an ability to connect up to the server over the internet. And then these subcategories, uh, documents, music, pictures, video, and downloads. And uh, this should indicate a place for everything and everything in its place. If you're working in open office, uh, you should be saving your work under the documents folder, which by the way is set to do that automatically. Um, a terrible, terrible place to save stuff is onto your desktop because you'll just get messy. And in fact, for the jam accounts in this computer system, I have disabled the ability to save stuff onto the desktop. Why? Because there's a lot of students that will be using this account and I just simply will refuse to allow a messy desktop. And since I have the power to make the changes, I do. So anyways, uh, um, we need to just get into the practice of uh, placing the documents in the right location. Um, for a rule of thumb, uh, this has been um, made so much easier to you because you, um, you, uh, when you uh, create documents uh, using the applications, they will say they've already been set up that they'll be saved into the right place. And it's very, very important to follow these rules because, uh, for example, the grab work application 
will assume that the work that you're asking is in that particular location. So please don't be a messy messy. Um, keep consistent and realize that there are other programs or people that are reliant upon where you store your work, which by default is except the default location that the application gives you for this computer lab. Uh, for right now, I'll just go into my home, into the home directory and launch the application. Now you should notice that the, this Nautilus program is very, very much like Microsoft Explorer. Not to be confused with Microsoft Internet Explorer, which is the web browser, but Microsoft Explorer, the file manager. That's what this is. And to tell you the truth, it's the same darn thing. And if you take a look very carefully here, here are all of the elements that we can go to. So for example, if I go to Documents, Subfolder, there are the documents that are currently in my Documents directory for the teacher account. I'm just going to go back up to the home directory. And just want to talk a little bit about uh, the elements uh, here um, on, the, uh, on, on this uh, file manager application. Uh, two major areas, the device area and subfolder area, and then the contents area itself. If you want to, um, if you uh, are using a USB device and you plug it in to the system, which I'm doing right now, uh, it has um, a feature to auto-launch. Uh, the device, and it just brings up another instance of um, of uh, Nautilus. Okay. Right now, we'll just minimize this and get back to it later. There are various uh, views that we can use, uh, and uh, how we navigate around here um, uh, may require us to change the views uh, from time to time. Just like in um, Microsoft Explorer, that file manager program, uh, you can change uh, the views of your icons. Right now it's set to icons. If I go to list, you will notice that the uh, it has changed uh, to smaller icons that go down words in a list, like a listing, uh, but provides more information such as date and time of creation, uh, the size, okay, in bytes. And uh, you'll notice that there are triangles that are beside certain folders. That just indicates that there is more uh, subfolders within it, so if I, or more content within it. So if I uh, click on the down on the triangle, it indicates there are some actual documents that are there. It may also indicate that there are subfolders as well. So it's just indicating that it's not empty; that there is actually content inside those particular directories. For example. The examples folder here it doesn't have a triangle here, so it is an empty uh, folder itself. Uh, likewise, I could go to view and I could go to compact mode, and now it's just showing smaller icons with the names of the file, but we've lost the information that allows it to bunch up more files uh, within a small space if that's what you prefer. So the bottom line is it's up to you. It depends on what your needs are and what makes you more comfortable working. Personally, myself, I like the uh, list option, so it gives me the ability to see more items in a compact way, information regarding size, uh, date and time, and also the ability to ex uh, expand or to collapse a folder. There are some other features that are quite interesting. Uh, one would be uh, show hidden files, so if for some reason uh, the, the system here, if you put a period before folder name or you put a period before file names, it actually hides it from regular view. Uh, these are useful for uh, configuration files, which by the way, you should not have to worry about whatsoever. Uh, and the idea is out of sight, out of mind. If, you, if they're hidden, then no one from the default view looks at them, and, uh, and uh, in that case, then uh, it's, kind of, it's kind of a way, good way of protecting something, kind of, kind of leaving it out of the way. If, on the other hand, you're really getting fancy and you want to see all the files that are in there, including the hidden files, you can select that and it would show all the files. And you can tell if they're hidden again if there's a period before the folder or the file name. Another thing that's useful is extra pane. When you do that, it actually brings up an extra pane. Why? Well, just from the fact that it would make it a lot easier to transfer files from, from one directory to another. For example, uh, if I wanted to take a look at the pictures uh, subdirectory uh, and the 
subdirectory webcam that's empty. Uh, but I could uh, open up documents in the other pane and now I could actually copy over a file um, without having to open up another instance of Nautilus. There's a lot of options here. You could actually open up two, two Nautilus programs and click and drag the uh, files over to copy uh, or to move. Uh, but uh, you also have the ability to open up that extra pane, which is very, very interesting. Since I'm in the neighborhood, I might as well show you ideas of moving documents uh, versus uh, copying documents. Obviously, copying documents to other areas take up uh, needless space unless it's for backup purposes. But I'll show you how to do this. I want to copy this file over to the webcam uh, subdirectory just for demonstration purposes. If it's if I just click and drag it over right now, it's going to move it. Chances are. Sometimes, if you're copying over to storage devices, uh, when you drag it over, it doesn't move. It just copies it. But the uh, general rule of thumb is, if you're on the same system, the same hard drive, and you move it, uh, you drag drag it from one folder to another, it's actually going to move it. To copy it. What you would do is you would uh, hold down the control key while holding it down, and then you click and drag, and then uh, release the uh, button. In this case, it says you can add a copy of folder onto itself, so uh, probably due to my clumsiness here, I didn't. Uh, I didn't do this procedure properly, and since there's a lot more uh, files here, I suspect what I did was by mistake. I, uh, I copied uh, over to this location by itself. I can kind of tell that because I see a lot of the sizes. This is a good uh, window of opportunity to talk about how to select for removal. Okay, so I just made a boo boo. Uh, what could I do? Um, there is no undo here in the program, so what you do, you have to correct yourself. And so uh, to remove a file, you can just click onto it and uh, press the delete key. If you want to be efficient, you can select a whole range of uh, files to be deleted, for example, by uh, selecting the first file and then moving down to the one that you, uh, to the bottom range, and then shift click. Very much like Microsoft, in fact, exactly identical to Microsoft. The control click is more uh, selective. So for example, um, if I want to deselect some files here, like this one, uh, like uh, this one, uh, like the, uh, this one, I should say, keep that one, select this one. Or did I have that right in the first place? No, I think I'm okay there. Uh, and then press the delete key. They get deleted. Now they don't actually get deleted, they're moved into the trash area uh, so they could be recovered or once they're there you can empty the trash bin and uh, they're doing pretty good for the system. So let me try this one more time with feeling, as my boss would say. And there we go. Okay, so now it's been place over. If on the other hand, uh, I go to scan document um, and I want to, instead of um, copying uh, but just moving over, if I click and drag simply with a, the control key, now it's been moved over and it's no longer in the original place. It's actually in the original So, uh, very important stuff to, uh, to be aware of here useful uh, tips. Another thing to be aware of is uh, how to uh, launch uh, files. Uh, although you may have opened up an application to create a file and saved it, it uh, doesn't mean that in the future you have to launch that application again and then load that file into the application. Uh, long since Windows uh, operating system has been around, uh, they've been teaching something called document-centric, meaning don't really be caught up into the file. Um, have the computer system associate the file with the application that created it, uh, so we could actually launch that application. So for example, if I point and double-click onto this file, 
it knows that it's a picture file and it opens it up with an application, in this case, uh, no doubt, an image viewer. It's associated with that. If you didn't want that, if you wanted to maybe do some editing on this and open up perhaps in the uh, GIMP graphical editing application, you can go to it, right click, and uh, you'll notice that there are other um, options here, including open with other application. And they give a listing of all the different other types of applications that we could use um, to edit this particular um, file. So keep an open mind that way. And if you're not sure um, what uh, application you want to open it up in, you can always right click and uh, indicate open with other application and it'll give you a, um, a selection. Another good thing. Uh, with, by going to a particular file and right-clicking onto it, other the features like renaming the file um, uh, as well. Uh, there are other things like cut and copy and, and uh, copy to or move to, which really do the same thing, but text-based or menu-based as opposed to just clicking and dragging. Uh, there's other things to sending uh, to uh, different areas that you specify. Since we're on the topic of uh, file management, uh, let's go to the trash. You can click onto the waste uh, basket. You can see here that they indicate there are four items that are currently in place. Or you could click onto this device icon, maybe go to view and take out that extra pane because we no longer need it. And here are all the uh, files that have been erased. If you're interested in restoring it, you can simply right-click onto, uh, onto the icon and you have lots and lots of different uh, uh, options. And one would be restore, meaning, oh, I didn't mean to send it into the trash bin, uh, so therefore I want to bring it, put it back where it was, and undo, so to speak. Once you empty the trash bin, then they're taken away and there's uh, no longer debris that is taken up uh, solely for these files. Does that mean they're gone forever? Of course not. Uh, what it really means behind the scenes with the computer is that a little teeny tiny flag or a little piece of information regarding the file has been set to say um, this space is available if the operating system either needs it because it's running low or it's getting desperate or it's just free to use. And it's at the discretion of the operating system to actually uh, say to use it or utilize it. So you're just basically saying, okay, it's open for overriding because we're not using it anymore. A lot of people think it's safe to remove things from the trash bin, only to realize that when you empty it from the trash bin, um, if someone needs to really, really get back to it, then computer experts might be able to go back in and actually view what's in there. That's the old saying, never assume that something is completely taken off, even if you've emptied the, uh, the uh, trash bin. Just realize that if you do empty the trash bin, that the chances now of recovering that file are pretty much gone for the average user. One last thing that I want to mention that is very, very important. Remember I mentioned that we minimized the uh, USB drive stick uh, uh, instance of Nautilus or the file manager. And one last word of warning. A lot of people get into the bad habit of just yanking out the, the, the uh, USB stick. Uh, you shouldn't do that. Um, if you notice over here is the name of the USB drive. And if I click to the eject button, it may give an error, but we don't worry about that. It now has properly unmounted or disconnected from the computer system. So now we can close that application and we can remove the USB stick safely. Not doing that could result in loss of data and certainly you guys would want that to happen after all of your hard work. Now this is the AVIT department just showing you uh, that a, a clean desk is a happy desk and uh, we want to prevent clutter from um, not only removing the files periodically, perhaps from the grab work application or removing unwanted files, but also getting into the habit of placing your work into the properly pre-designated locations that they should be and not to and resist the temptation to override that uh, because there are other people there are other people in other programs that are are depending on the applications being in those points. Anyways, we just wanted to wish you happy volunteering and have a lovely day.